eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Good evening, everybody out there in Buccaneer land. This is Matt coming to you live from the Buck Wild Show here in sunny Oklahoma. Uh, draft day, 2022. I don't know how many of you are out there. I, I Some of you might just have burnout from all this good time we've been having for the last three days. But in case you're living under a rock, starting last Thursday, we started our annual uh, draft project for the Buccaneers, and uh, we were 27th pick overall in the first round to start things off. I went to the local Wings house, ran up a tab, a big tab, got the 26, and then we had to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> so, uh, for all you folks that are out there that were thinking we were going to do something on the day one, eh, you were sadly mistaken. We did what I thought we were going to do, which was tra we traded back to the second day. And that's when it all started on Saturday. So really, I guess the guys from uh, from Tampa, the uh, folks that went to Vegas, they just wanted to catch a buffet before it got too late. So they went ahead and traded out from 27 to 33rd which in the big picture is not really that big of a difference, but it does matter to the general manager and the way contracts are structured and that kind of thing. So in my eyes, it was smarter to do that than it was to pick 27. Uh, this draft had nobody really, uh, what's the polite way to say it? It just didn't excite anybody. There wasn't anything in there that was great, great. There wasn't anything in there that was terrible, terrible. But what it did do was it created a mess. There was an awful lot of trades in the first day. People were moving up and down the board. New England was the most notorious. They moved from wherever they were at to uh, midway up in the first round to get a player that, according to the Los Angeles Rams, was a player that should have been slotted for the 100th pick or somewhere in that area, and he came out in the early 20s. So that was kind of interesting to see that gamesmanship going on between – the cocky guys in L.A. and the old grumpy man from uh, New England, old Bill Belichick, who knows more than anybody. So that was a that was the day one highlight to me. I thought that was hilarious. And then we go to day two. We opened up the store with the thirty third pick. We were the first guys, and we picked a guy that uh, here he is, Logan Hall. Defensive end. And you're saying to yourself, why do we need a defensive end? Well, JPP took off to Mexico and said, see you later, Tampa. What does that mean? He's leaving Tampa to go on vacation or he's leaving Tampa forever. Bye-bye. See you later. No, no more. So we need to start working on that kind of stuff. So we got Logan Hall, who was, a, by all accounts, a very good pick for us. At 33, he could have gone in the first round. Some people say uh, – I read an article that said it was an A++ pick because he should have gone in the first round and he got dropped down to the second. Honestly, I don't know. I'm not I'm not the kind of guy that sits there and goes through all this crap every single year and picks 25, 30 picks just to mock things up. Mom taught me that you're not supposed to mock people, so I don't. <laughs> And Buck Skull, I saw you in the lobby. You didn't give me much time to get to you. You kind of blinked right back out again. So if you want to link up and try again, go right ahead. We do have the link in the uh, comments section for anybody who wants to join the conversation. Uh, it's this one that says StreamYard and a bunch of other stuff after that. Basically, you click on it. You can come in. You don't have to be on the air live. You can use an avatar that are provided or you can come on your camera if you want to do that. It's totally up to you one way or the other. I just don't put my phone number out there for the world to have. So if you want to come on the show, Buck Skull came back. 
we'll go ahead and bring him in here and see what he's got to say. I know he was active yesterday in the in the Bucks Report live coverage that we had with Johnny Dean and his crew. So uh, just one second here. Let me get this all working. Can you hear me? I, I hear you. All right, you're good, man. Got the glasses on, huh? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. What's up? What you got on your mind, man? Um, a lot of people is, is upset about some of the picks we got. We're going to start with the running back, the punter, um, tight end. Um, a lot of people, Buck fans, are upset about those picks. Well, I don't know why they would be. I mean, we don't have any real holes on this this team. We we lost our uh, yeah. we lost Marpet. He retired, and we replaced him with a five star replacement from free agency like a minute later. We have two backups to his position that that were more than serviceable last year when people were injured that are in camp and, and already in the yeah. locker room. Why we so, need Justin? Why we not Justin the best players available? We could have had James Cook. We could have had that ball, Bryce Hill, Bryce Hall. We could have had him. Well, I don't know. You'd have to ask Todd Bowles that. I, I really don't know. I think what they did was smart. They they started out with defensive end, which was a glaring problem because they have to That's get right. We pass on Ryan. Okay, who's Ryan? You're going to have to – who are you talking Ryan. about? Riot, when the Packers got him, he was a steal. Riot. What was his position? Same as Logan Hall. Same position. So that that that's like you go into a bar and meeting girls. Some guys say the girl you're looking at is ugly and you think she's gorgeous. It's just a question of how you grade people, right? Okay. So yeah. Logan Hall, according to Bleacher Report, was an A++ pick for us wow. to get 33. So wow. Some people look at him one way. Some people look at him the other way. Exactly. Frankly, I, I I think Jason uh, Jason and the and the the uh, scouting department yeah. with the Buccaneers have hit on every every single year that they've been here. They've done well, so yes. I'm one not going to second guess them. They they had a reason one, that they wanted him. Only one year they didn't do good. Only one year. Only one year. What year was that? Tristan Wirth? Or no. Robert Guayo, the whole draft class. The whole draft class was bad. Well, you're not going to hit 100%, but <laughs> Robert Aguayo was supposed to be good. He's a head case. And he, he, he failed three different teams. So that wasn't, that wasn't the Bucks coming up bad on that. The guy was the number one kicker in the, yes. in the NCAA. Let's talk about this corner. This corner is elite today. The corner we drafted, he's elite. He was a home run steal. Zion? Yes, he is steal. Yeah. Well, then why you say the draft is bad? <laughs> I'm reading, I'm, some people say that. I'm reading the Buck fans. This is crazy Buck fans here. We well, the, a lot of people put out comments just to put out comments to see people react to it. A lot of people said we should have oh. kept Jameis Winston, too. So, you know, we, you know, we, what are you going to do? We got Logan Hall right off the bat. That was a good pick. The second guy we got, Luke Gadecki. I heard he's a five star. Guard. I, heard, I heard he was like a five star. Gadecki? <laughs> yeah. Brian Jensen and him are the same kid. They, big mouse, lots of, lots of attitude, lots of get in your face, not going to take a lot of junk. That's the kind of person well. you need. I heard with Sean White compared to Le'Veon Bell. This guy is good. A home run pick. This running back Sean White from Arizona? Yes. The running yes. back? 15 touchdowns last year. I think it was 20, about 20 touchdowns. 1,500 yards. Something like that. Crazy ridiculous numbers. Last yeah, season. he had – let me look that up real quick. I had that up here. He yes. had an average of uh, six – let me get the screen a little bigger for my blind yeah. eyes. Six and a half yards per carry with 48 receptions is mm -hmm. the quick stat on, on Rashad White. Yep. He's not supposed Rashad. to take over for Levi for uh, for uh, Lenny. He's just going to spell him. So We never know. We never know, man. We don't know what's happening in training camp, OTAs, and preseason. We never know about this kid. 
you never know. But the, those top three guys were our, our first round. That was the second second round picks, the, the ones that you just talked about. Logan Hall, Luke, uh, Gadecki, and Rashad White. They All starters. They're starters. All three of them starters. Well, I don't know if they're going to be starters, but they're going to be in the mix. Within the next year or two, they'll be starters because the openings that they're there for – the offensive tackle is supposed to take over for Nadamik and Sue. Sue is probably coming back. So Luke Gadecki is probably not going to start, but he'll probably get some time in this year. Rashad White's not going to take Lenny, Lenny Fournette's position, but he's going to benefit. What does it mean for Keisha and What does this mean for Keisha and Vaughn? What does this mean? I guess he's going to have to step up his game a little bit, huh? I mean, that's what competition's all about. You put the you put the best players on the field, and the ones that are willing to produce. Vaughn is a good player. Yes. Rashad White can't just come in and automatically assume he's going to be number two, but you can expect him to be somebody that we keep hey. past the point that we keep Leonard Leonard Fournette, and we keep and we keep Kishan, um Yeah, Vaughn. I really, I really will want probably to talk about be here punter. for a couple of years. I really want to talk about this punter and kicker, though, for real. That punter is off the chain. <laughs> He off the chain. Okay. What would happen? Yeah, what happened there in the third round is we got to a point where we didn't really need anything. We were picking people, and and Pinion didn't wasn't the best punter in the league last year. So you need to have competition. We had the ability to pick no. one of the better punters in the here. league in the NCAA last year and bring he's him in. Out. I think he's out in about the next week or two. I heard he's out. He's out of here. Save three million dollars in cap space. He's out of here. Yeah, he's got a, like two and a half million dollars salary that, that we don't need to keep necessarily. That's one of that the reasons they pick. Yeah, that money can go towards um, maybe maybe a sale or towards Gronk. There, that money. We have ten million dollars sitting there waiting for Gronk and Sue to sign. That's what that's Tom what Brady we, cleared up. That's so why we we've got myself. money. That's why we treated the first round pick because if first round pick, he took a lot of money. The first round pick, right? They're guaranteed a certain amount of money, and they're guaranteed a fifth year option yep. in their contract. Where hey. a second round pick doesn't have that. So I want to talk, you, you, I want to talk, I want to talk about this corner though. For this corner is a lockdown corner. He's a shotgun corner. He's a man corner, just like Ramsey. He's six feet three, six three. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah we I don't have a lot of tall ones. Hey, I think. I think someone from Mike, he might have some competition, man. And they, when those two are out the door. The I wouldn't say they're out the door, season. but. This guy's rangy. He's rangy, but he's he's a rookie. You're not just going to come in here and take over the place. And he wasn't exactly he a, a, a. What word would be he be? It's just real. It's just real. It's real, sir. It was a steal. A home. He's projected round three, sir. He's projected round three in this year's draft. Projected. Right. And this year's draft was all jacked up. <laughs> they had quarterbacks that were supposed to go in the first and second round that didn't go until the fifth or sixth round. They had all kinds of stuff going on. This, the, this the draft was so ready. unpredictable, it's stupid. But, um, hey, man. But, guys, benefit. I think, guy, I think this guy's, I think this guy could be the next Ramsey. That's what people compare him to. Ramsey. I'm hearing his comments. Ramsey. He's a man corner. It's possible. It's possible. He's a rookie. We'll have to see what he does. I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading all the people saying give him a 10. Five stars. Everyone's giving man. I think the Bucks knew about this kid. Well, yeah, they know about him. The Bucks know what they're doing. They've got one of the best scouting departments in the league as far as I'm concerned. They know what they're looking at. And they know... Yeah. They know what they need. They know what they don't need. They know what they don't need to waste their yeah. time on. That's too. How about how fast is a four three? Ninety five speed, ninety six speed, a four three. He went yeah, four, four three, three but the, <laughs> in a forty yard dash, you still have to cover the the routes. You still have to cover the cuts. You have to cover all of that. You can't do it. He's the main corner. He's good for talking more defense. This is this about to be good. Yeah, he should be. I don't think Todd Bowles picks bad good. players. He's one of the best defensive minds in the league. I like the so, linebacker rejected. Like the linebacker rejected from LSU today. Like was the seventh round. He's not bad. He's not bad at all. 
the seventh round pick and 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 Andre Anthony. Yeah, yeah. The player I mean, for was a seventh round pick. He's a good player. He's from LSU, so that's got to give him something. But there was a reason he was in the, available at the seventh round. I mean, let's be honest. He, he came this close to being an unsigned free agent, right? That close. So we'll just have to see what we get with that. But we we did very well. You guys, do you think this punter? I really think this punter about to be the starter. He's out of here. The punter. <laughs> Man, because it's funny from Georgia, he's SEC champion. Georgia champion. He's from Georgia. Champion. They had a champion. really good team. He didn't get stressed a lot. So we'll have to see he's what champion. happens. That's what was wrong with Robert Aguayo. You know why Robert Aguayo was so bad when he got here? Is he <laughs> he went through three years of being with a Florida State team that was national championship caliber. He never had to work. So his statistics were lay, were 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 kind of slanted. So yeah, you never know punter, until they get him in camp and make him start working under pressure. How this good punter, they are. Punter, I was six, eight yards or something like that. His punter, his something like that. Kick. And he's also a place yeah. kicker, so he he can he can he can uh, kick off. So a one hop. So. I heard he can kick from the five to ten. It's good if he can kick it that far. I heard he can. I heard he's like, I think oh, that I 20, 30 for thirty. A crazy stat. He can punt so hard. Yeah, it's possible. Like I said, we we got a we got a whole bunch of people here that have potential, and everybody comes out of the draft with potential. But so the USFL is full of players that had potential. <laughs> you like to, um, you like to, so you like to, you like to, any other players who drafted on free agent undrafted free agents we got? You like any of those choices we got? What well, choices do we have? They they don't. Come out until Monday. We would have picked them up already. We would have got them today, today, sir. After the draft, sir. Well, I don't look at it until Monday because right now all they're doing is cleaning up the. They're cleaning up the lobby. They're going home. They're going to regroup, look at whatever they got in the draft. Then they're going to start looking at the free agents that are available. They're going to start looking at the uh, unsigned, uh, undrafted people that are available, and seeing who they can bring in. I think we start camp in June. We might start before that, but um, yes, mandatory camp starts the first I week of June, I believe it is. So they got a little time oh. to work all that stuff out. But, we we still got to work on Sue's yeah, contract. I mean, I mean, we got to see what Gronk's going to do. You got to see what JPP is going to do. All of this stuff's got to come into focus here in the next week to ten days. I, I think JPP is gone because we got his, someone else who got got his number now. The kid was drafted. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> You're talking about JPP. He's got two rings. He's a Pro Bowler, and he's been around the league forever. And he's always been a Pro Bowler. Versus a guy who just got drafted. I mean, you got to be realistic here a little bit, right? A little bit. So, but, course, yeah, but, I mean, hold your water just a bit. That, I'm glad you're excited. I heard he, but none of these guys have done anything yet except 90, get picked. I heard he got number ninety though. I'm no voice. Logan Hall, yeah, Logan Hall, yeah, number ninety, according to the to the jersey. Who 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 told you that? The internet, sir. Hmm. On the internet. The internet. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, I guess he can buy the ninety if he wants it, if it's if it's available, but. I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm not willing to trade out all of the players that we had on the team last year are not going to step down hey. just because we drafted some players. That's not going to happen. But hey, the competition, competition now. <laughs> yeah, they're going to hey, have we competition. Traded fourth round, we traded the fourth next year's fourth round pick next, next year. It's not going. It's gone to the. I think it's going to Jacksonville because we got the steal from the. From that quarterback. There we go. I might try a fourth round pick for next year. Is that, is that, well, that, that yeah, we've got plenty of picks. We're not worried too much about all that. That's one thing that Jason Light does. He, <laughs> we're stacked up. <laughs> we also don't have a lot of needs. So about, all of these things that but, they, they. Look at this. That means we're drafted a corner because maybe you think we're going to compare them 
because some because we would afford able to sign Dan and Bunty next year, both of them. Plus, we got a lot of other people we're going to be signed next season too. Is that going to be hard? To do you think to sign the players we need to play that we need to get right now? And, next season and for next. I'm not sure what you're you asking me. Are you saying can we sign the con- the the free agents that we need to sign and, and get all our draft picks in? Is that what you're asking? I wonder if you think some of the money and and then we'll be here for not a year or two. Or you think this might be the last year in Tampa? Because because they're, they're free agents next season next year. Dane Who are you Bunty. talking about? The cornerback we have. Some of the oh. and. And Sean Murphy Bunting and and and, and uh, Jamal Dean. Dean. Yeah, is that why maybe we drafted a corner? We drafted a corner because we need corners. <laughs> you need a bunch of them. They're, they. <laughs> no, what I'm saying, we still have the other corners we had last season still. Yeah, we do. But every year you go through competition in the in the in the uh, training camp. Yep. And then you put people on the practice squad, and then you've got players that are going to get hurt, and then you're going to have free agents you're going to need to sign in the middle of the year, like we did with Richard Sherman and all that other stuff. All kinds of things go on, you come back. on next year. Hey, What's is that? there a chance? I heard, I'm hearing buzz about Tony about the Odell Beckham thing. I heard, I heard Tom bring like Tony Brown post on Twitter. I think he loved it or something like that. Tom Brady comment on Odell Beckham post on Twitter. We don't need Odell Beckham. A couple days ago, <laughs> I, I, I was wondering if you know about that. He comment, Tom Brady comment on his post. Does that mean? Does no. that mean anything? Well, I don't know what he said, and I don't know about the post you're talking about because I really don't pay attention to that stuff this time of year. This time of year, there's so what? much junk on the internet; it's ridiculous. So I, it, it'll it'll <laughs> just pollute your brain if you try to accept everything as fact. It's not true. Yes, we don't yes, need drama. We don't need a new Antonio Brown. We certainly don't need Odell Beckham. There, there is no way in the world that we're going to go from Antonio Brown's mess to Odell Beckham. That's stupid. Are so, the Beckham not a trouble? Are the Beckham not a troublemaker? Yes, he is. He's a fruitcake. He apologized to a kicking net because he knocked it over one week, and he made a big <laughs> stinking deal about that. Don't you remember wow. that a couple of years ago? Oh, I forgot about that. He one, got pissed sir. off and kicked the kicking net and bent it all to pieces. And the next week, he came out on the sideline and he gave it a kiss and all. It was just <laughs> stupid. Just stupid. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, I'll let you go because somebody else might want to get on. All right, man. Well, have, have a good night. Have a good night. I'll see Bottom you again next week. If I can, raise your day and go Bucks. There you go, go Bucks. Have a good night, man. So there you go. That's Buck Skull. He's always interesting. Guy's got a lot of rapid fire questions. You got to stay on your toes with that guy. But uh, he's excited, and I don't blame him for that. But I do caution people about getting overly excited about things you read on the internet right now and who's taking what number and if we like a player or not and all this other stuff. Because you have to realize there's a whole bunch of stuff got to go on between now and then before we even get started. So just kind of take it with a grain of salt and let it go. So I'm going to go through a couple of these comments here. don't have a whole lot. I think people are probably a little burned out on the whole uh, draft weekend so far. It's been an awful lot to absorb, but that's part of it. So let's see what we got here. We got Ben Parrish. What about the fourth round punter? Well, we just talked about that. I think there is a reason it has to do with salary is one thing. And they also want to put competition in camp. You don't pay anybody till we get started in the first of the year anyway. So you can draft all you want. And the Bucks are in a luxury position where they don't have a need to where they have to really get down and dirty. Like when we had Jameis, we needed a quarterback. We don't need a quarterback. We don't need a whole, whole lot of players. We can make do with what we've got. Uh, we made do with most of what we got right now last year when everybody got injured and we did just fine. We made it to the playoffs. We made it all the way down the road and we almost got to the Super Bowl. So don't put a lot of salt into the uh, 
idea that we need to get a whole bunch of players because we we drafted them, we're going to sign them necessarily. That's that's not what we're the way we're working right now. And ben also said, "What's up, Matt? I don't know if he was on the air last week. Maybe you guys were with me, but last week we had just gotten started. We had about 15 minutes of the show going on, and the tornado sirens went off across the street from my house. And for the next hour and a half, we had tornadoes ducking and diving all around here, and I, it was pretty pretty scary night. So." Uh, I'm pleased to say we got through it without much trouble. We had a couple of trees come down, but everybody's alive and well, and every everybody's got a house to live in, and nobody's, you know, got blue tarps on their roof or anything like that. So it could have been a lot worse. Um, but springtime in Oklahoma is never something you shake. You you have to take it serious because at any second something can happen. Okay, enough about me. Let's go to the next comment here. I think the linebacker Dean would have been a great pickup. Well, I don't know that we have a lot of room for linebackers right now. I, I just don't think we're in a situation where, where that's a need right at the moment. We needed a tight end in case Gronkowski doesn't come back. We needed to start working on the off defensive line because we've got some age out there and people are in situations where they may or may not come back. Um, and it's still up in the air. So what our needs were, we took care of. What our wants were, we didn't bother with. And, and that's because I think they're pretty confident they're going to get most of everybody back that they need to. Um, Christopher Cole with Luke G is a beast. I think you're probably right. Everything I read about the guy, he's supposed to be an animal. He looks like He's a big boy. He's 300 and something pounds. And uh, I think he's going to be a, a great addition. I think that was one of the – the first two picks were the two that made most sense to me, and they were the two that made the most impact to me. Everything that came after that is kind of like adding to the pile for, for uh, camp competition, regardless of what people might think. Uh, Shod White may stick, but everybody was high on Rojo until he got here. So – you never really know what you're going to get until they get in the camp and you see what you got. Uh, James Wood, draft's not an exact science. Absolutely, that is truth. It's like I was kind of alluding to to Buck Skull earlier. You can check any Saturday night at any bar in town and you'll see three or four guys just oogling over some girl and two or three guys talking about what do you see in that? She looks like a horse. And that's just the way people are. Some people love it. Other people say, I don't, I don't, I don't agree. So it's just a question of how you grade people and of that grade, how much of it is actually true. Cause you can't tell the heart of a player until he starts getting paid and he has to perform. Um, can't tell you how many players we got free agents and stuff have come through Tampa, got a huge paycheck. They got here and then they turned into nothing. Chris Baker, for instance, that did absolutely nothing, but got a check. And that's the heart and caliber of a player. Um, draft player drafted players are no different they get out of college they have maturity issues they don't know what it's like to be away from home the whole world changes when you go from playing a sport to playing a profession it's a different way of thinking it's a different ex expectation the speed of the game is different in all aspects and that's why some people come in and just burn out and other ones succeed very well and other ones like tom brady just over over exceed and overproduce and turn into something great. But you never know until you get here. Uh, we could have a new punter and kicker next season. I agree with you, Christopher. I think they got this guy for a reason. Uh, unlike uh, Ray Kennedy, one of my guys here at Bucks Report, I'm not 100% sold on suck up. I don't like the guy. He seems to take a. <laughs> It seems like for a guy who gets paid to be a kicker and he's got a history, he seems to have situations where he just misses because he's not concentrating or just doesn't care or whatever. And it cost us a couple of games last year, whether you want to admit it or not. And I know nobody's exactly perfect as kickers go, but there's not nothing different between the shape of the goalpost when, <laughs> when we had Chris, uh, Steve Christie here and we had Donald Igwe Buike here, and we had Martin Gramatica. Those guys weren't kicking at any different goalposts than some of the guys we've had here since, the, like Matt Gay, who couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. 
it's just weird. It's just weird. And kickers are strange. So we'll have to see. Uh, they've signed a lot of undrafted free agents already. Well, I haven't caught that yet. And I've been busy doing other things that have to do with the show. But uh, that's possible, Christopher. I, I, I would expect Monday and Tuesday will be pretty busy at One Buck Place about getting those guys in here that they want to have undrafted free agents. They want to get them tried out and, and give them the opportunity to participate in, the, in camp. So that's coming. Um, I just think, you know, they just got <laughs> – they haven't gotten all the stage taken down from, from the uh, place in Vegas yet, and we're already working – on uh, talking about Jersey numbers and, and other players coming in here and getting cutting other guys that are already on the roster. I just think it's a little early. Let's see here. Gabriel Leverett suck up is golden. Yeah, that's, that's questionable. <laughs> what was the difference in the game we lost last year in the playoffs that sent us home? I think it was a field goal. How many kick off, how many field goals did suck up miss in that game? Oh, one. There you go. That's the answer. That's the answer right there. That's the, the method to the science. He should have been able to hit it. He didn't. We could have used it, and we didn't have it, and we got all the way to Tide and ended up in overtime. If he'd have hit the thing on <laughs> the three he missed, the one you miss is the one that matters, right? If you miss in the Super Bowl, you're Scott Norwood for the rest of your life. Think about that. Or if you do something really stupid, you could be like Gyro Yaprimian running around on a highlight reel in a buck uniform trying to throw a pass off of his shoulder or some crap. It's just crazy. So we're not going to agree, man. <laughs> he was great when he needed to be, but that's slanted for st statistic. We're scoring 30 points a game. If you can score 30 points a game, you don't really need a kicker, theoretically. Most of the games, you're not going to need 30 points. We needed 30, we needed about three more in uh in the playoffs that we didn't get. And that three more was hooked, as I recall. So you're getting paid to make one job. You got to kick the damn ball one time kick it through the damn uprights. If they're going to put you in a situation where he's kicking 75 yards, that's a different deal. But if it's something from 40 yards or less, should never be an issue. Should never be. I don't care if it's suck up. I don't care who it is. Matt Gay, I don't care what kicker it is. What happened to Matt Gay between the time he was here in Tampa and the time he got to L.A.? I don't know. Matt Gay missed a field goal. Well, I don't care what he does, Fred. <laughs> he's on the other team. He can miss them if he wants to. The point is, if he's going to miss one and we make the one that suck up made or missed, we win that game. If we both miss, we end up in overtime and we lose the game, right? So there's a lot of reasons for that game to go south on us, but we did make an awful lot of effort to get back, and it just irritates me that somebody like suck up that's everybody's so high on he had one job, just kick that damn ball through, and he missed it. Matt Gay's proven that he can't kick. Can, he's just not the guy that you can lean on all the time. That's why he's not in Tampa anymore. The guy could, couldn't hit inside 40, but he could hit from 60. I don't understand how you do that. When you're kicking an extra point, Matt Gay couldn't hit it, but he could hit it from 57 yards away. Doesn't make any sense. Carl Hardy. The life of a kicker is either hero or zero. That's true. And you're only as good as the last one you missed. And I, 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 I was in sales my whole life. So, you know, I know what that's about. You're only as good as today. What you did last week doesn't matter because that's last week's commission check. We don't care. How much did you earn this week? That's the way life is. That's the way kickers work. And that's what I expect out of them. And I don't think it's asking a guy too much to come in that doesn't have to play 35 snaps a game he's only got to do three or four right so just do what you're supposed to do if you're put put in a reasonable expectation where you're inside 40 yards 40 to 45 yards you should be able to hit that ball and kick it in that's what you're getting paid for especially if you're somebody who's a pro bowler or somebody who's been to the playoffs a thousand times somebody like suck up who's got a credentials 
shouldn't be missing the kind of stuff that he missed last year in the uh, times that he did it. That's just me. I think you're right, Christopher Cole. I think you're right. He missed an extra point. The point was we put ourselves in a position where we were losing at halftime. We managed to turn that around every position except the kicker. And he's the one that had to do the least. So that's just how I look at it. Anyway, so we'll uh, continue on from here. I was I was looking at the uh, draft. I was going to go back over a couple more of these guys that uh, we picked already. Like I said, we our first our first pick of the second round, thirty third position was our first pick. Logan Hall, defensive end out of Houston. That, to me, I think was a good selection. Our second pick was also, uh, let's see, get his name out here, Luke Gadecki. He's supposed to be a Brian Jensen kind of guy, supposed to have a lot of attitude. He, as far as I remember from the stat they put up, it looked like he was a huge kid. I think he was like 315 pounds or something like that, six six foot three or four. And uh, that got my attention. I'll take that all day long. Um, I think for an offensive tackle or guard, because ESPN has him as a tackle or guard one way or the other. Other uh, news sources call him an offensive tackle. I don't really know where he's going to fit. If he's a guard, he's in there for Ali Marpet. If he's a tackle, Donovan Smith might have some competition. Who knows? But I think he's a good selection either way you look at it. He's got a high, high upside to him, and I think we're going to be happy with that pick for many years down the road. Followed that by Rashad White, a running back out of Arizona or Arizona State, and um, he did very well out there in the desert. He, he you know, for the Pac-10, I think it is, it's out there. He did very well, and um, he's he's got a high upside, but he's not Fournette. He's not going to be Fournette, and his his purpose is to catch passes because Tom Brady likes to pass. He's not a great runner from what I read. He's too vertical. When he's running, he doesn't get behind his pads like he, he could or should a little better. But he's got an awful good uh, resume for the time that he was in Arizona and his college career was uh, was commendable. So we'll just see what we get. I don't think there's a Barry Sanders in this this draft. So running backs nowadays, they're designed to be here for three years and be flushed and sent brought in somebody new from the draft the next year. So I don't get too excited about them anymore. When I was a kid, you used to look for somebody like Tony Dorsett, Barry Sanders, uh, uh, Eric Dickerson, and Herschel Walker and your your Earl Campbell types. They were workhorses. They don't do that anymore. They do a whole different kind of game. So the running backs are kind of like mix and match. You can just slide them in and run them. It's no big deal. Outside of those three guys, we went to the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round. And we did pretty well. We went – our next pick after that was going to be uh, this Cade Oten, I guess his name is, or Aton. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. He's a tight end. He's not a um, Aaron Hernandez type. He's more of a Cameron Bray type. He's going to be a, a good blocker, a reasonable pass catcher, and he's a big kid, and that's the kind of guy that – we use our tight ends for that. We don't use them for a lot of passing uh, unless you're Gronkowski. But with Gronkowski right now, you don't know whether he's coming back or not, so they're having to patch that that hole. And if you look at the draft with a defensive end, an offensive tackle, a tight end, and a running back just to pad the position, you can see what we're doing here. We're, we're backfilling for positions that may come open. And um, that's what we have the luxury at in Tampa for a change to be able to do that, that we hadn't had necessarily 10 years ago. We were always, we need to find this guy. We need to find this guy. We're not in that position anymore. Now we're, we're putting people in development positions where they can become great. We have the coaching staff to let them come, come in here and become great and fill in 
uh, when necessary to give somebody a breather or if somebody's injured, we've got comp comparable, comparable players that can come in and fill in for short term while they develop. Tampa has never been that team until the Arians uh, era started. And it's so strange having followed them from the 70s all the way to today. I can't remember a time when this was something we had the luxury of doing. I'm going to ask a guy who probably knows because he's got a better history mind than I do. This is Mr. Tampa Bay Ray. You guys know him from his show that he does live there at Ferg's most nights. He's popped in. We're going to bring him on. How you doing, Tampa Bay Ray? Good, brother, Matt. But I can't. All I can see is K. Dot, and you got on the screen there. Oh, there, there you are. are. I hey, was. I'm doing things, man. I've got graphics. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you're producing when you're planning on being by yourself i don't want to look at myself all night it's just not important oh so. man don't i know matt i, I did it last <laughs> week when i i i I, sw I flipped the script and went over to radio and as, as funny as it is with this we have this visual feedback and then on radio not only was i dealing with eight local stations but i had no idea when the commercial breaks were and you talk about juggling mm on a, a tightrope 20 feet above. I felt like, you know, I was in Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus, but how you doing tonight, my friend? I'm doing good, man. I got to be honest with you. I'm burned out of this this weekend already. I mean, it started on Thursday night, and Thursday was boring because we didn't – Todd Bowles even said it wasn't that great of a night. We didn't do anything. So uh, I was with him on that. Right. But we did what I thought we were going to do, which is strange. I was actually right. I guess that we were going to trade Thank back. Thank you, Tabitha. I'll have one. Send her one my way. Tabitha, the manager here at the Irish 31. I'll tell you what, in Seminole, you talk, and I was just telling him how great you are. It was so fortunate <laughs> to have a place. Uh, she said, thank you. She, uh, to have a place like this, Irish 31 here at the Seminole City Center. Just, you know, uh, I love the Irish 31 thing. It's a, a pretty much an Irish pub in the neighborhood and what they're doing out here. And I love to be able to come down here. And people always are like, why are you always coming from live over there? And I'm like, it just feels like home, you know, having grown up. My grandfather right. owned a few bars when I was a kid. It was Kennedy's, Kennedy's Irish Bub Pub and Tavern. But, uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> I Matt, you know, it, it's uh, the Buccaneers in the 2022 draft. It seems like it went exactly as we thought it would as far as the positional needs. But yet it was satisfying. I mean, they still made some great decisions, still got some right. great players. And unlike right. in 2021 when Joe Tryon Shayanka, they said, was a luxury pick, I think we've got – you know, you address the fact that Indomitian's not under contract and JPP was on a big old jet airliner. You, you, you address the fact that Bradley Pinion, as good of a punter as he is, he's, he's fallen off a little in the past few years. And, you know, it's you're not talking about the kicking position or special teams being a position that has to pay for, you know, being in a cap strap. But these are things that teams, good teams like the Buccaneers have to do. They have to address things like this. And I think they've done a heck of a job in 2022. I, I couldn't agree with you more. They did exactly what we've never been able to do, which is, I was saying just before you came on, we're right. padding the backing, you know, we're, we're backfilling on the seawall to keep it up there. Yes, sir. And we've not been able to do that in 30 years. It's just crazy. And anybody that looks at this draft, hey, like uh, Buck Skull was talking about, oh, we blew it. We did this. We did that. We didn't get this guy. We didn't get that guy. Right. We got exactly who we wanted. Exactly. It, and, and we got them because the, we had the luxury to, sit back and just wait. If we had gotten the 26th pick and the Jets hadn't taken that, I forget the guy's name, but the Jets took our guy. Was it Trayvon Walker? Had, was that the defensive lineman? No, it was lineman? Jones, somebody no. Jones or something like that. It oh, right. Them. The defensive lineman, though. The, the uh, yeah. defensive interior defensive lineman. But, uh, yeah, I mean, but then instead they end up getting a guy at 33, you know, and they were on the, the clock all day, and, and then they still got a little fatter in the middle there and got a couple extra draft picks, and I think that's exactly that's what Jason Light does. Yeah, and, and he learned that in New England, and, and Bruce Arians has got that same mentality. We've got our superstars for another year or two. Right. So we've got one or two years to pad these guys up and, and get them going and bulk them up and get them on the field when we need them to. But they're not pressured to start tomorrow. It's the same thing with the Kyle Traska last year. I was going to say, that's exactly start. right. I like, and, I love, when's the last time the Buccaneers have ever had uh, uh, ever been able to draft a quarterback in the top of the draft like they did Trask in 2021 in the second round and you know bury the lead not only does he get to sit on get, get to sit back and learn a very complex offensive system if you will that Byron Leftwich is still running here but gets to do it behind the greatest of all time and 
Uh, you know, I don't know how many of those good habits and stuff like that rubs off, but I mean, I, I would pose that any kind of leadership or any kind of things you could take away from playing behind a Tom Brady would serve would serve you well in your stead as you continue to or as you start your career off as a professional quarterback. If you take if you take advantage of what you got, you're getting a Harvard education for free. <laughs> yes, I mean, you are. He, he's getting paid to watch the greatest guy in the world do his thing. And, you know, whether you like Tom Brady or not, or if you think he's overhyped or whatever people might say about him, he came from 199 in the draft to be in the GOAT. I don't care what you say. I, I didn't like him in New England, but I knew he was good. It's kind of like Aaron Rodgers. I have watched Aaron Rodgers because I appreciate that he can come back at any time and you're never out of the game. Brett right. Favre was the same way. But I don't necessarily want him to be my quarterback. <laughs> you know, because nope. he's just – that's just who he is. But now, like uh, Kyle Trask has got – Logan Hall's behind on a defensive end. He's got JPP prospectively to be there. And and whoever else that he's got to play behind, he's got one of the best defensive coaches in the, in, in the NFL as a head coach. And all of these trainers and, and extra coaching staff that they got to key in on people and, and target their weaknesses and build them up. If you take advantage of what you've got at one buck place right now, well, what do they call it, Advent Health Center now? One buck but, place, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, when it was one buck place, it was one trailer park place, right? It was, <laughs> it was. It was a couple of double wides and a, and a portable. So, I mean, you're looking at a, a world-class organization who's got a world-class idea now. The, the, the Glazers like being winners. They've decided that's what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to structure it, and they've got everything in place. And if you're lucky enough to come to this team versus going to, say, like a Jaguars or Texans, one of those kind of places where you're trapped for life, Detroit, right. you know, you got to count your blessings and take advantage of it. Well, man, I not think only these that. You get the running back out of Arizona State. You look at his – you look at his – you know, you look at his history, and you're like, oh, wow. Not only did he lead the team in, in, in running, but he also led the team in receptions, right? And right. So you're talking about a James White or a Giovanni Bernard or a receiving running back out of the backfield. And then the Buccaneers in the fourth round today, they get a tight end, and you look at the tight end's history, and you see, oh, wow, he's actually a stronger, a str a stronger blocker than he is a receiver, but does have the ability to create separation. And you start going, wow, it sounds like we got a this. It sounds like a Gronkowski. And of course, we still don't know what Gronkowski's plans are for 2022. We, uh, Tom Brady clears the space with that little whatever he did with the magic with his contract, didn't add another year, but opened up $9 million. Um, but I, I, I honestly, at this point, Matt, I'll ask you, uh, if you asked me today, and uh, my own personal opinion, if I had to think that Gronk is back, I want to say 50-50, but I almost want to say 40-60. It seems like with the back issues he had and with some, maybe, you know, Gronk's deciding now is the time for him to walk away while he can still walk away. Now, do I want to see him back again? Would I like to see him get another year with a Cam Brayton and, and a rookie tight end and, and, and have that depth and have that co the cohesiveness with him and Tom Brady? Yeah, mm -hmm. but if not... The Buccaneers, again, in a 2022 draft with a tight end, with a nose tackle or a defensive lineman, with an offensive guard, with a running back, and then even with a punter, they're addressing needs. And, it, you know, I guess you could say any team, any general manager can just look at their team and address needs. But I like the fact that the Buccaneers are addressing needs with players that not only are, or, or happen to fit the mold of what they needed, but are also – quite good at what they're doing as far as we're getting good players. And now I think that right now you asked me the Buccaneers overall, and I'm not grading them against the rest of the league because it'd probably be graded on the curve. But I'm going to say, of course, you don't know for three or four years exactly how solid, but I'm going to say the Buccaneers get at least a B plus, if not an A minus on this draft, just for the fact that they filled actual needs that this team needs to not rebuild, but to continue reloading and moving on in 2022. And I agree with you 100%. I think that if anybody gives them anything less than a B, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> I they're just, I, I just, you know, the fifth, sixth, seventh rounders are not really necessarily expected to do anything. So you kind of put them in just because they had them. They'll end up on the USFL next year and, or whatever. But um, like you said, we went down the list and, and you could just look at the position, not the player, but the position. They were doing something on purpose every single round. Everyone. And they, every single one of them was just close enough to the guy that they might be replacing that they've got all the skills that they're going to lose or close enough to where they can make that work. And you can't do it any better than that. 
And, and what is it with the Washington Huskies? I mean, first of all, you got Vita Vea, <laughs> right? Then you got Joe Tryon Shayanka. Then you bring the tight end, and I loved it. I love what Joe Tryon Shayanka posts out there. He says, you're my dog. Let's get going. And, of course, you know the two of them played against each other because as a defensive end, and, and I'm sure that this, this tight end was blocking him at the University of Washington, but the Buccaneers are really starting to – that. and I, I would pose that that's not a bad thing to have a relationship with a program like the University of Washington Huskies because – so far, so good as far as the players the Buccaneers are getting out of there. Let's not talk about Safiri and Jenkins. That was something 100 years ago, and we're not going to apply that. You don't have a way to – you can't draft for a weakness like he had, though. I mean, you got to give – the guy had a problem. Right. And he had skills, but he had a problem. And same thing with Johnny Manziel. And there was a guy that – several years ago that was a quarterback. I can't remember his name all of a sudden, but he had drinking problems. And that's a hard thing to beat. Jamarcus Russell? You, well, him and it was a Collins, wasn't it? The guy who played Carolina. Oh, Kerry um, Collins? Yeah. Was it Chris? Chris Chris, Chris Collinsworth? I just no, no. out of here. I just messing with you. I can see him, but I can't remember his name. And that's I got you. Old. Anyway, yeah, well, the point the I'm trying you- to make is you can't it's like Robert Aguayo. He went all the way through college, and everybody thought he was a golden golden toad. Right. He got under pressure, and his best friend became James Jim Bean. You know, it just doesn't work, and you can't see that coming. And then you can try to work with a guy and try to give him everything like we did with Arguello. We gave him all kinds of here, help, help. And all right. All that. And it's a hard thing to beat. So and let's I don't go give ahead. Austin Safarian Jenkins that much above. I'm not kicking him around so much because – Unfortunately, I've been around people that have that condition, I guess is a good way to put it. And you, it, it's like I'm trying to quit smoking. I still mm-hmm. buy them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't yeah. smoke a carton a week all of a sudden. I'm doing things to try hey, to baby, prevent that. Hey, but, 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 baby steps. It's baby, gotta, but I'll tell you what, in, in going back to Roberto Aguayo, you know, some people posed at the time, well, you know, Jason Light trades up into the second round. And, and, and the thing is, is that the Buccaneers needed a kicker. They needed to address that was a bugaboo for 10 right. years with this team. Yeah. Um, was it extreme? Yeah. But Roberto Aguayo and the body of work he brings in from Florida State t- told you that you were going to get a consistent kicker. Um, I don't think it was the pressure. I just think, like you said, he, he kept him here in the state. He came home. He, the, the kid had a heart of gold. You still haven't seen him catch on anywhere else because he was never able to you know, get that back. But, uh, you know, the the thing is, we see this every year. Uh, and this year has been no, no, no different is that you got all these players and you got the pomp and circumstance and, and everybody gets excited. And sure, you know, 75% of them are going to wash out in a few years and, and you're going to look back and go, what was I thinking? But, you know, I, I like I think the, the fun for me in the draft is as you get a year or two down the road, as you go back and you look at the, the second, the third and the fourth rounder. And, and, and the, you know, you go and look at a Chris Godwin that you find in third or you or second, you go and find, you know, a Levante David who you found in the second wasn't a big top of the draft guy. And that's why as much as we like to, you know, I kind of took a back seat to the draft this weekend. It's like, let it happen. They're having a good time. I wanted to see the Bucks address those needs. But, you know, at the end of the day, really, this year's draft becomes real, you know, applicable two years from now when we see the pieces starting to fall into place right. or not. So. Right. And anybody that thinks they're going to come in tomorrow and start and kick somebody off the roster, I just don't think that's a realistic expectation, especially this year's draft. I I just overall from one all the way down to the end, it it just there wasn't anybody in there that makes me think they're going to be – you know, perennial Hall of Famers just well, because they were in the draft and they got right that college. Def- the defensive lineman, and again, he's an interior guy who can bounce outside. So there's your versatility along that defensive line. Um, I think you have Nunez Roches. I think you're still going to have Will Golston, where the Buccaneers are still in a position mm-hmm. where we're not pressing this kid into duty. I think Joe Tryon Shoyanka takes on a larger role this year, and that's why you see a JPP no longer probably going to be on this Buccaneer squad. I think in Dominic and Sue, whether it be hit, and this is just my own personal opinion, whether it be his own decision now to spend a little more time with that beautiful wife and his two twins of his, and he's having so much fun. Uh, I think he wants to play here, but I think at the same time that the Buccaneers are, you know, you're looking at the bottom line and you're looking at, it's a business, you know, it's a business at the end right. of the day. And so you got that depth <clears> of the interior defensive line. And 
Um, and I'm not saying I, I don't want to see Indomic and Sue wearing, you know, wearing the Panthers colors or the Saints colors for Dennis Allen or or playing for the Atlanta Falcons in 2022. But at the same time, you start to wonder unless that cat's going to, you know, sign a friendly deal. And it's not so much that he's diminished his his abilities have diminished, no. but. I, it comes a time when a team has to, you got to let the young guys break out, you know, like with, with the Rays when they traded away Austin Meadows to make room for low on this team. And, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you're going to let a player go that may still have a few miles left on the tires, but you know, you got to do it for the good of the team and in the future, as well as the present. Well, to be fair though, Sue was drafted before I was married and my kids are coming out of high school now. So he's been <laughs> in the league a while. A couple um, years. Yeah. Yeah. He's been here a bit and I think he's, if he's coming back, he'll come back to Tampa, and I don't. I'm not sure he's done. I, I'm not sure he's going to come back at all. Yeah, and, I don't and think it, it's, it's kind of like when all my pets said I'd rather get a doctorate than you know my knees and CTE. Mm-hmm. I can understand the decision, and Adam Kasu can. If you listen to him talk, that is a smart man. He oh, thinks. Yeah. He thinks. So he's planning down the road. He's not one of these guys. There was some guys drafted in the first round, and I was joking with Keith on the on the messenger last night where he got a degree in public speaking because all he could say is, "Well, I mean, I mean, I'm glad, I'm, um, yeah, I'm blessed," and that's all the conversation he could have with an inter- interview. It's pitiful to me when you're coming out, <laughs> you're coming out of a five star college. college, and you can't yes. do a thirty second interview without, I mean. We know what you mean. That's why you're talking. Well, and that I will say though, Matt, nuts. this is the this is the most this is the most exciting time of their lives. And you're catching them, you know, five minutes after they just and you know, someone put it so succinctly today. These guys, they knew they were gonna get drafted. They knew that they were gonna continue playing in the in, in the sport of football at the national football league level, but you know, they didn't know where, you know, what state they're gonna be in or what division right. they're gonna be in, or so you know, all that all of a sudden comes flooding forward. And uh, so, yeah, but no, I agree. It's a shame that uh, some of these players, you know, they maybe they, they just haven't had a chance to maybe they haven't had a, a chance to let it wash over them and all. But, uh, yeah, you should be able to at least, you know, put your and that's why, you know, you get to the you get to the National Football League and you start you start doing guest spots on the Bucks report with our gang here because we'll bring you on and we'll nurse you along and we'll get your public speaking on point and, uh, and we'll continue to help you get better in that <laughs> regard as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you know. Whatever, I'm blessed. Uh. I'm blessed. <laughs> so, Matt, let me ask you. Th- let me ask you this though. So, uh, you know, we you, you talked about it. You make it up for last night. Did you catch any of that Bandits game today? Because I know we're here I on the Bucks report, but that was a good game. That was a good. I game. It looked like them the- last week, and I was yes. Oh, terribly last week. Upset. I don't last know. Week was I, not good. I couldn't. I couldn't uh, focus on the game last week. So right. there was some stuff going on, and I look up, and I'm like, God, man, mm. they got the worst loss in the history of the USFL in its second week or whatever whatever it was. But um, this week, they turned around and did something that they came back on the team. That, came back. That, that's Shut awesome. them down. Had a turnover, yeah, I like and then I I love it. You know, we saw it again. The I'm not sure who the coach is for the uh, for the Houston Gamblers, but you know he call, tries to ice the kicker, and the kicker hikes the ball, and he calls a timeout. He still proceeds with the kick, and it's wide right. And then right. you know, so he goes and lets him kick that 41 yarder again, and that time it's right through the uprights. And you know, I just these coaches. You know, there's coaches that you just you've seen it. There's certain coaches that'll purposely wait to the very last. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and ice and, oh, I get it, whatever it takes to, you know, try to give your chan- your team the best chance to win. But I-, I love it when it comes back and burns the coaches. Now, I, you know, did he let up a little bit once the timeout was called? Probably. probably. It probably wasn't his best kick. But, um, yeah, good game today. Of course, the Rays lost today. and But the, with the draft this weekend, uh, you know, next thing we have to look forward to is the rookie camps and the OTAs and the humidity is no, coming no, no. in. You're their local, so you probably know better than I do. I saw a thing, a pop-up where I think their mandatory camp starts in June, first week of June. Don't don't they have the uh, new head coach in uh, voluntary, involuntary, or voluntary? Well, you get uh, that extra week, right? You get that week long start. Now the OTAs are usually in mid March or mid May. I'm sorry, so usually a couple of weeks after the draft, you'll have the the rookies will come in here, and it's kind of like that that get to know you period. You know, you're going to mm-hmm. come in there and they're going to give them the old speech. Now that you got money, you got to watch out. You know, 
You know, you don't right. want to win a Super Bowl. You don't want to win a Super Bowl and drive off in a Hyundai speech. <laughs> and you're going to have the <laughs> players come in here. And then, uh, you know, Tom, even, you know, this season we've saw it too. Even Tom hasn't been here. He was here for Bruce Arians, uh, you know, retirement uh, thing. But Tom's been off and he's going to have that golf match coming up in June. Gronk, of course, is still out there partying in Vegas. And it's not just the inmates are running the asylum and everybody's, you know, nobody's in for 2022. The, the thing is, is I love this. I got to watch the 10th episode of the man in the arena, Tom Brady show on ESPN. And you know, I, when I watch something, especially something Tom Brady or football related, I like to put a pad and paper in front of me or pe- pa- pa- paper and pad or pencil and pad. And I like to take notes cause I like to, okay, what? You know, and there's one word that Tom mentions throughout the entire first 20 minutes. And by the way, guys and girls, if you haven't seen it, the man in the arena on ESPN plus, I highly suggest it. Um, but Tom talks about continuity. And what I mean by continuity is, is that he talks about the fact that, you know, teams, you, sometimes teams, when they, especially when they're as bad as the Bucks were, they start at two and 14 or four and ten, four and 12, or, and then they got to work up to eight and eight or 500. Mm-hmm. And then you, you work to that winning record and then you get to that wild card. And of course the Bucks in 2020, you know, flip the script. They go from seven and nine to, you know, in Super Bowl 55 in 2020. So they kind of got there. They didn't have to work so much on that continuity. It didn't take them a, a progression of years, a five, six, seven, although I would pose that Bruce Arians, Todd Bowles, and, and Byron Leftwich were already put into pieces in place the year before. But now what you're seeing in retrospect now, of course, the Bucks lose in a divisional round of the playoffs last season to the Rams, but now you're seeing a team that – has already been to the mountaintop, already still has an established base camp, if you will, and that continuity now. So really, the Bucks are just going into their third season now with this group of guys that have tasted the championship. They, they kind of did it reverse, right? They got to the top, and now they're – but I still see a team that's focused. I see you bring in the new blood. You bring in a few – Logan Ryan. You bring in free agents. Uh, you bring in these guys that haven't had a taste of it yet, or maybe they've had a taste but not here in Tampa Bay, and now you have your draft picks. And I still I still get the vibe. I still get the feeling out of one buck place and here in Tampa Bay that this team, it's not like, oh, I've been there, done that. Um, I've actually seen more of that with the Rams, hopefully this off season. And I hope that the, the Rams <laughs> are the ones that the Bucks beat in the playoffs next year. So we can get out to Super Bowl 57. They're out in Arizona. Honestly, the Rams are taking on the personality of their coach and he's a punk. And I, um, <laughs> he's a punk. <laughs> that thing, he, when he went after Bill Belichick over moving up and picking the, the player that they had rated at 100. Right. That's something you say internally. You don't come out on TV. Yeah, and do that. I mean, on. it's just that that's just punk. <laughs> he's, a, he, he's an emotional guy. But, you know, I, I still remember Sean McVay when he was, you know, shagging footballs as a offensive quality assistant under John Gruden, you know, back yeah. in 1776. So you but, see, um, you see a, a little bit of Gruden in him, though. And, you and do. I mean, you do yeah, see Gruden, a little bit of Gruden in him. Yes. I hope his emails are cleaner. But <laughs> uh, but hey, everybody better check. To, hey, do a neck up from the check up there because now yeah. you know the. I, I love that the NFL is going to actually step up with the investigation into the. You know, of course, when money's involved, all of a sudden everybody gets mm-hmm. serious. But the uh, Washington Football Team, they have that one year investigation, and they get an oral report with no written records, and you know, oh, everything's fine. But then you know, you talk about the you know, Daniel Snyder may have been, you know you know, scraping a little money off the top with some of the revenues that should have went to the other, the, the visiting teams mm-hmm. there. And now all of a sudden it takes a literally an act of Congress, but that, what do you that think? That sounds Brian, like a Capone kind of thing, doesn't it? it well, it, yeah. <laughs> well, Matt, what'd you think about, you know, Brian Flores? I don't think we're going to get an answer as to whether Tom Brady was actually on a boat in a Marina with Steven Ross when Brian Flores was supposed to go meet. I don't think we're going to get, I don't think we're going to get all kinds of juicy nuggets, but you know, Brian Flores takes the NFL to court and the NFL is pushing hard to get that into arbitration, which basically means we're not going to have our day in court. We're going to keep it behind closed doors and let the big boys and girls. Yeah. Let the big boys and girls figure it out. And I would pose the end of the day, you know, if you take into to take into account antitrust exemption and some of the luxuries that these professional sports teams are afforded, so these billionaires can continue to make their millions and billions, I think when you've got a situation like a Brian Flores lawsuit, to talking about you know uh, uh, possible issues with coach hiring and some of the nefarious activities with tanking, trying to tank for a, a Joe Burrow or right. something, yeah. I want to see that day in court, and I don't care if you got to crack a few eggs. I'd like to taste some of that omelet. Well, yeah, I mean, it's more to me. That's more impressive. Something I'd want to 
it's more of a an item that I'd watch as opposed to Johnny Depp and his girlfriend. Oh my God! I, yeah, I, Amber Heard. That that, that that thing they stuck on Fox News there for a couple of days, and even Fox News couldn't keep it hot. They were like, "Oh, we can't watch this crap. It's garbage." I kept getting breaks but, on my phone from Unilad. I'm like, "Oh, you know, yeah. they're coming back. You know, <laughs> they're coming back from you know lunch." I'm like, "I don't care. Yeah, I, don't I don't care." care. How did Johnny I even follow Depp, you? He was a millionaire and he's lost all his money, and now he's trying to save face by putting somebody else in a ditch. I mean, it's just it's Hollywood. Now, yeah, why, the NFL why are you with their with problem that? with the, with Blanc, Brian Flores and the Rooney Rule and all of that nonsense, and then this stuff with Brady, uh, the story that Chris Sims got in his email that nobody can prove, and all <laughs> the other junk that's been going on. I was kind of mentioning that to Keith in a in a, a chat on Messenger during during the uh, draft. The Shield's gotten a little bit dirty, and 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 yeah. the, they they used to be. The NFL could do no wrong, even with the the uh, the uh, Ray was it Ray Rice Ray Rice with the video until that video surfaced. Yeah. yeah. Well, until the video came out, they had put it away. And then right. the video came out, and they had to do something with it, and they handled it to a degree. And he's not been around since, and he's not even huh? in the USFL or the CFL or anywhere. So oh yeah, he's. Him. Well, he's Matt, gone. let me can I ask you something, Matt? Completely unrelated, because you know me, my thought process <laughs> jumps all around. Yeah. Did you hear about the Miami basketball player, the, the kid that plays for the University of Miami Hurricane basketball team on Friday? Did you hear about this kid? No, I don't know okay. basketball well, enough. What would happen? You, well, you know the name, image, and likeness now that, you know, Congress passes the mm -hmm. law that says these, these right. college kids can get their hustle on and whatever you're worth, go ahead and work it. We won't even bother you. This kid basically was looking to go into the NBA this season, this next year, and then he decided he didn't want to. and. He's an integral part, if you will, or important piece of that Miami Hurricane basketball team. But he basically comes straight out and says, I'm going to go into the transfer portal unless I get $800,000 in my name, image, and likeness contract. So, you know, now you, you go from two – in a two-year period, you go from <laughs> – you got name, image, and likeness, and the trans the transfer portal now, which literally every day there's kids jumping in there now, and now you've actually got college basketball players that are going to start holding out if they don't oh, get no. the right money. And it's like you send know, them to Moscow with some CDB vapors in their luggage. That'll straighten their answers <laughs> right up. <laughs> Ten days in the slammer, but you know the thing is, is that I don't know if at the end of the day it's gonna. I don't know what's gonna have an effect as far as the intake or the, the you know the the product on the field, but. I mean, at what point, you know, these players are going to actually, and you know what's going on? It's probably been going on forever. You know, hey, I'll come play at your college if my dad can do get a you job. Do you remember or, along these lines? Do you remember? This would be 20 years ago, though. So I don't know if you were in Tampa then or not, but there was a kid oh. in Brandon. His name was Tony Mack. And he set every record in Hillsborough County basketball. He was Michael Jordan in high school. Okay. And he was better than LeBron. He was as good as Michael and he was supposed to go on to the world and just be all that. And what wow. ended up happening to the kid, he was, he was on the same graduating class as my brother and my brother graduated with him. My brother went to some small school and got a couple of year degree. Tony Mack got into the NCAA, couldn't open a book, couldn't wow. read, couldn't, Yeah, they couldn't get him anywhere. He got into the, uh, he got to the NBA, he couldn't read a playbook. He failed out. Two, three years later, he got a tutor, got him up to where he could think again, wow. where he was supposed to be after he was a senior, and he'd already been skipped right. out. He got uh, allowed to go to Georgia, I think it was, and okay. pick up his college career. Couldn't do it. Didn't have the He didn't have the uh, maturity because yeah. they coddled this kid from the time he was three and a half feet tall, but he was in a league with two two-year-olds. <laughs> Yeah. And he was awesome. He would he would fill a stadium or uh, the, the Brandon High School gymnasium mm -hmm. would have standing room only when he played home games. Yeah, he went to he went uh, to college. Dwayne Shinsis was on the team with him. Dwayne Shinsis. Oh, yeah. And God, um, that cat was big. Yeah, he wasn't when I picked him up and threw him over a fence in, in nursery school. I, <laughs> 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 I remind him of that all the time. I got crazy one day and just lifted him and threw him over a fence. But then he got big, and I met him ten years later, and I couldn't couldn't even begin to talk about. Him. But um, big cat, yeah, yeah, he's a good kid. He's his his father went to a police academy with my mother. Wow. So anyway, nice. long story short, Tony Mack got into the NBA twice and failed out, and it was because the public system failed him tremendously. Yes, sir. And he couldn't do anything, and 
that was a guy who was truly gifted and he couldn't get anywhere. If he was in today, I don't know what would happen. If they were going to do likeness with him, they'd have to revert it down to high school because the Brandon high school built a new gymnasium over him. Wow. I mean, that that's the kind of stuff that he did when he traveled around to the different schools in the area to play the, the, uh, the attendance records would go through the roof. He wow. scored 85 points in a game by himself. Something I'm like that. Must stand up. I must stand up a minute because my legs falling asleep. But well, tell that lady to come around and bring me a black and tan. I'll take it. She doesn't have to do the shamrock. Matt, I'll have a black <laughs> and tan and go ahead and give me uh, two Irish car bombs and chase it with a Jaeger <laughs> Yeah, buddy. No, I got to keep it real because I got, I think I got, I'm, I've got Joshua Cole Allen from Pewter Report lined up tomorrow morning. Oh. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and, you know, I figured, hey, we're going to do a full, a full draft wrap up show. And, you know, I, I always, usually Sunday mornings are my, you know, a sojourn for the sports savvy soul. But I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's 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 look at this. Let's look at the the every, all the picks the Bucks got in here, and also Josh mm-hmm. going to fill us in on those pertinent, like you said, those OTA days and the days we can look forward yeah. to. So I'll keep it. You know, I'm only going to go ahead and just make it the two Irish car bombs. Skip the Jaeger. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, I mean, I just I appreciate you having me in here. I just want to jump in here, and we thought we'd mix it up a little bit about the draft. I I I very very satisfied with the way the draft went for the Bucks this year, and I think that you know again it's going to take two or three years to see this, but I think. We're going to see Joe try on shrink. I think we're going to see Joe showing up this season. I think the He's Bucks got to know put that. on thirty or forty pounds, from what uh, I heard last yes, year. Yes, sir. And and that's but what he, he can do. That. I don't want to see him lose that because he's got that length. He's got that you know that length he's that he can we can wrap tall, around a corner. Though. Yeah, well, and well, tall. kind of reminds you of a JPP, but JPP had more muscle. But you know, it takes like a Simeon Rice. It takes that length to to go ahead and swim, move, and get up underneath your tackle, right? And then right. go ahead and reach in. I think that that was one of the reasons last season with Joe was that, you know, because he didn't have that extra 20 or 30 pounds, he would still get upfield and still get the positioning on he, the tackle, but he could yeah, push him. He, he push he him by. He beat his initial blocker, but then he'd be in bad position to catch a quarterback. Because of because he didn't have the weight and he didn't have yeah. the, you know didn't have that size. I think you're going to see. And I I saw him uh, in that presser a couple of weeks ago, and it looks like he's you know it looks like he's putting a couple of lbs on, which is great, which is good stuff. Because as long yeah. as you don't damage the speed on that kid, you're in great shape. No, if he if he could do it right, and and like I said earlier, the Buccaneers with all the training coaches they have and all the oh, yeah. facility people, personnel, whatever. I don't think there's any other place in the league that you could go to and not get a better opportunity yes. to improve yourself if you take what they're saying and do it well who else and, who else has a moral a, a moral javada fart we've got one of the best you know her with her with her conditioning program you know and and uh lori locus being a head of the athletic development committee i still the, think the, yeah lori locus on the defensive line as an assistant coach i still think that she ends up being a, a full-on defensive line coach if not a dc someday that that she can she's a monster i mean she's a piece and the guys the players love her because with her they know what they get you know and that's one yeah. of the reasons i'll work it back to the diversity that this buccaneers team has had and uh you know, it, it, we always say, oh, everything's coming up roses. I think, you know, you could talk about the Super Bowl championship. You could talk about the, you know, Tom Brady and, and the great, you talk about Mike Evans in the eight seasons of a thousand, all the great things for the Buccaneers. But um, at the end of the day, one of the most f- fulfilling from the soul uh, has been the diversity on this team and the fact that uh, Coach Arians, that's, that's as much as, as the winning and everything else is. I think the legacy Coach Arians has is the fact that he's shown that, you know, Man, woman, black, white, Catholic, Jewish, Muslim, it doesn't matter. It's just doesn't a matter, matter of you put the do best person job. in a position to do that job. And the players, they're going to buy in because the players want to get better. So the diversity with this Buccaneers team is one of the things I'm just, I always, you know, of course the winning's the best. Of course, being a champion, <laughs> a Super but Bowl they go champion hand in is hand. the best. They're like but that. It's they, nice they, because, yeah, it, it speaks forward. It speaks volumes moving forward. Mm-hmm. Coming from the era of Hugh Culverhouse, who ran the damn thing oh. like a plantation, to the to where we yeah. are today, we've come so many millions of miles. It's it's just incredible. Yes, and the sir. draft was good. We're going to have a good time with preseason. We're Trash going to have good. A, a good regular season, I think. If this is it for Brady, I hope that we can get that. You know, he's still got that statistic every other year is his year. So he's yes, sir. Due. And, and if he's we can due get to- that done. 
he's due to beat the Saints in a regular season because he's 0 for 4 against the Saints in a regular season. Well, I we know can't that do it this year, we're not gonna get it done. I mean, there's let just me tell you <laughs> did you see do you watch do you watch this fan control football crap? I, I say crap because I, I have about as much interest in watching this as I do anything but you know Jameis Winston was was playing tonight and he threw an interception to Tyreek Hill and Tyreek Hill returned it all 50 yards did you you watch that fan control football uh, I was gonna say guys called you. oh what's that yeah, Jameis oh did he really so Jameis oh Jameis uh this gentleman here is telling me Jameis walked today graduated from FSU so that's solid that, that he went back and got that diploma got you know got well, he need to do graduation. something he can't guarantee a check with the NFL <laughs> oh man <laughs> I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna leave you on that one, brother. I, I tell you what, man. <laughs> I, I I gotta be honest with you. The guy had the opportunity, didn't do what I think was the right thing to do, which is make sure you could see 40 yards. I mean, yeah. that's that's key. It's yes, like sir. hunting with my eyes. I got to get a cataract removed. And right now, when I'm driving at night, only half of my vision is any good. You're at potluck if you're in the car with me because it may, well, you or may got not a, happen. You got a cataract. Yeah, I had one in my right eye five years ago. They took out and put a lens in, and I got 20-20 vision over here. Now, this one's uh, gone to hell, and I'm going to have that a, done here in a month or two. I, I have a Ford Focus. But, um, a Focus. Um, oh, you good, oh, man. You funny. A double no, entendre, brother. Hey, it Matt, wouldn't thanks. work. It wouldn't hey, work. If you don't mind, I'll just remind everyone, look for me tomorrow morning on Cup of Ray. I'm going to wrap this whole draft thing up, go. and, and I hope you're tonight. doing well. Yeah, and I appreciate I, you for having me, my friend. I thank you for coming over because I Teresa's – out of pocket for a while. Yeah, and, I hope uh, Teresa's doing well. I hope she's doing well. I know she was going to have a little downtime. I spoke with her. She's going to be running my comments for one of my shows coming up here. And and I know, good. but uh, you did a great job tonight, my friend. And uh, as always, Buck Wild here on Bucks Report. I appreciate you. Well, I appreciate you, Mr. Ray Kennedy. Wait, you want to do some Bay. comments? You want to do some comments? I, there isn't any more. I tried. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, right, we, well, I then. think everybody's kind of tuckered out. And then I pissed people yeah. off when I was talking about Brett Suckup. I, I was... I was riding on an edge. Whoa, there. you talked about able... Ryan suck up. What would you say about Ryan? Yeah. That he you sucked wanna... it up. That's why we didn't we didn't win the damn we didn't get past the Rams. And I'll say it till till the day I die. He should have hit that field goal and we would have been not tied, but winning. No need for overtime. I, let me tell you something. <laughs> That 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 you know, Bor 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 Borgales is still on this team. Borg former Miami kicker, and he kept you know they kept. Of course, teams were keeping two kickers because of COVID twenty, you know, COVID nineteen mm -hmm. and such. And and I and I, Mister Irrelevant, you know, he was the very last draft pick when he comes out of college and catches on with the Kansas City Chiefs. But I've said that I think that it, the Bucks are as much as I think they're going to give Kyle Trask a chance to take care of my friend. They're going to give Kyle Trask a chance to go ahead and take that number two spot from a uh, from a Blaine mm -hmm. Gabbard if it's possible. I I will not be shocked if you see the Buccaneers giving Borg Borgales a chance to to assume the kicking duties with this Buccaneers squad. And it's not this because punter they picked up today's got kicking ability too. Yes, and yes, he, and it, I read I think that it was him that is um he can kick off, which yes. is good. And Which so, is what Bradley Pinion's been doing for Ryan Suckup the last five years or four years. Yeah, so, so why do you pay somebody a premium like Suckup? You pay him a premium and he can't kick off. I mean, that <laughs> I don't well, get that either. But You know, he does have – he holds the Buccaneers record for, you know, season scoring, took it from Martin Gramatica. The guy's a phenomenal talent. He was, but I think that when you're looking at the, the millions of dollars he's making and you got a team like mm -hmm. the Buccaneers that's going to have to make – you got to make finite decisions to 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 give yourself not only a stack, you know, good roster, but you know, when it comes to the end of the day with the salary cap and finances, mm -hmm. you know, it might be a toss up. But Borgales, you know, there were quite, a, you know, that was remember last season, Matt. The big thing was when we had Borgales on our practice squad, and people were like, you know, in the preseason, they're like, well, uh, the Bucks might be able to get a draft pick for this kid. Well, you know, it wasn't that crazy, right? You know, it wasn't right. that crazy. But I still think that there's a chance that that kid's a that kid could, could be good, uh, could be kicking for the Buccaneers in 2022. Stay tuned. It's one. That's what that camp's going to be for. There's going to be a couple of positions up. It's not just the whole well, game. Kickers back, are never running back. Kickers are never secure. They can they can flush them at any time, and they're replaceable right. for a couple right. of games every other game. So yeah, I don't I don't. I know you were real high on sucker, but I like I just, him. I like the kid. I I think that he let us down in times when we de desperately should have earned his check. And there were a couple of times he he didn't Matt Gay us you know he didn't Matt you know, of course Matt Gay now he looks like nails for the Rams of course Matt for Gay this didn't. year 
Well, what's Falaxi, he going to do yeah, next year? Boo. Well, yeah, I mean, he seems like he's gotten his, <laughs> you know, the kid could make a kick. He could make it from 75 yards out, but exactly. he couldn't make it from inside to 30 to save his butt. But, uh, yeah. hey, brother, we'll he save it for another time. There you go. Well, Ray, it's been fun. I'm done. I think we've had enough tonight. <laughs> I'm and done I appreciate too, you coming on. I hope you Always have a good a time with your, your show tomorrow morning. I probably won't be up by the time you come on. But if I catch it, I catch it. And um, and I hope you have a good weekend with that. And say hi to Joshua for me. He's I missed Hello, him brother. this week, to be honest with you. He, yes. he kind of trumped everything last year when he was standing outside the uh, cannons, calling out the draft before we oh, were supposed that, to have it. Wasn't that aces? <laughs> <laughs> that was aces my friend that that was crazy and uh yeah so yeah i'll get him on there that. i'll i'll uh, i'll do a special high for him my friend and we'll talk to you later my friend all right and all you guys out there on buck wild land we're gonna call this tonight as well i hope you guys enjoyed the show thanks for ray kennedy stopping in and uh, all the people who stopped in to watch the show i appreciate it and i hope you guys have a good night we'll be back next saturday here at the uh, buck wild nine o'clock eastern time on bus report and we'll cover whatever we can cover from la next week's news and see what we come up with with maybe some unsigned free agents joining camp and oh, whatever else is getting ready to happen. It's coming close to the point where we actually got things to talk about, and that's going to be the fun part. We're going to be at a point here very soon where football is relevant again, and not because it's the spring league, but because it's the real league getting ready to get going, and we'll have more information and more things to discuss. And I think that's what – We've all been waiting for. So for all you guys out there that enjoyed the draft this week, um, I was with you. Three days of that is over with. Get some sleep, pay your bar tab, and get started next week for something new. And until then, I want to uh, put a shout-out to Teresa Baxter. I hope she gets to feeling better. Uh, we do miss her here, and I hope she can come back soon. And uh, all you guys that came in to see the show tonight, I'm, I appreciate your, your watching. Share, like, tell everybody you know, and get some more folks in here to join the party. We really appreciate it. You guys have a good night. Good night from Oklahoma City, and I hope you guys have a, a wonderful Saturday evening.